In Power BI, things get difficult when you're dealing with different granularities of data. Consider a sales table that is at a transaction level and consider another expenses data that is at the month level. Now to complicate the problem further, what if I tell you that you have to allocate the monthly expenses to daily sales, not transactional sales, daily sales. How do we solve such kind of allocation problems with data at different granularities is something that we will take a look at in this video. All right, before we move any further, it's imperative that we understand that what are we trying to solve here and take a look at the data and understand the problem. All right, so I'm working in this Excel and I've mocked up the data to kind of show you the data as well as the problem. So I have my sales data right here and you can see that the dates are duplicated. That means on the 2nd January, there were two transactions of the sales. Now this is my sales data, pretty standard columns, transaction ID, date, product ID, region, units, price and sales value. Now. I also have some expenses that I have incurred. Let's say add expenses that I've incurred to carry out these sales operations. So if you take a look at my uh, ad data, you can see that every single month I get one row per channel. So in the month of January 2011, I had two rows of data, one for Google ads, the other one for Facebook ads. And this is the total money that we spent in the month of Jan across the two channels. Now the ask is that we would like to be able to take a look at how much did we spend daily not monthly, daily. So we need to be able to take this total expense of the month and allocate it by the proportion of the sales in that particular month. Whatever sales happen in that month, find the ratio of that and allocate this particular amount. Now that you've understood the problem, there are three parts to this particular solution. The first part of the solution is that how do we even visualize that? How are we going to approach this problem? Can we just maybe do a rough mock-up of how our solution is going to look like? That's the logic part of it. The next part is going to be once we have mocked up a rough solution and we have visualized that how the end output is going to look like, we then start to build our model and lay down our calculations and then even test those calculations. And then finally, once we have tested the calculations and we have made the model, the final part is that how can we present present that in a meaningful way that the end user understands the solution really well. All right, let's just start with Excel to kind of lay foot in understanding the logic as to what are we trying to get at here in Power BI. So in Excel, I have built this simple pivot table here from uh, this particular sales data right here. I've built this simple pivot table. Now what I have done in the pivot table is that I have removed the transactional level granularity and I've gotten to the day level. That means I can take a look at daily sales for 2nd Jan, for 3rd Jan, for 4th Jan, so on and so forth. Now if I need to do an allocation, then I need to find the percentage allocation. That means how much of the ad expense is going to be given to day number one, how much of the ad expense is going to be given to the day number two, so on and so forth. So I need to find that percentage. Now that particular percentage is going to be nothing but allocation percentage, which is going to be nothing but 45 divided by the total of that particular month, which is about 1200. So that gives me that particular formula D4 divided by D25 right here. And if I drag this particular formula down, I am going to get the total of 100% all of the sales of the month. Now, once I have received the allocation percentage, then I need to take a look at what is the amount to be allocated. So if I just go real quick on sheet number one, take a look at the total of these two values, this total is going to be 554. Now that is the amount that I need to allocate to these percentages right here. So I wrote down 554 across all the cells, and then I multiplied 3.8% by 554, giving me the allocated value of $20 on that particular day. Now this calculation that I have done as a rough work in Excel is going to give me some understanding of what my final output is going to look like in Power BI. So I'm trying to seek this particular amount, which is going to be divided by the day. And this is the kind of output that I would want. The question is, how do we do all of this in Power BI? Let's just jump to Power BI and start from there. All right, in Power BI, I have loaded all the data. Let me just kind of show you the data model and what kind of relationships are we trying to build here? So on the left, we have Power BI and we have the sales table like the way that I showed it to you. We also had the products table, but that's going to be a simple dimension table right here, which is linked through the product ID to the product code right here. And we also have built a calendar table, which is right here, pretty standard, nothing that complicated. Now, these are my two dimension tables and this is my fact table, all good to go. And I have also loaded my ads table right here. Now the question is that where do I link this particular date column of the ad in the calendar table? Now the thing is that if you take a look at this particular visual right here, I have my visual which is actually filtering by the year, by the month and by the date. All of these three columns are present in the calendar table and using this particular calendar table, I will filter two tables. 
The first filter is going to be the sales. So obviously I can filter my units or my sales calculation right here. So that filter, which is year filter and month filter can come to this particular table. That's filter number one. And this particular year filter and month filter should also filter my ads table to find out that what was the total money spent in that particular month. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this particular date. Now note that this particular date is not a running date. This only has month end dates, but that's all right. So if I just maybe click right here, click and build a relationship right here, I would now be able to pick up any particular column from the calendar table and filter my sales table and my ads table as well. All right, let's just start to fire up the calculations and I've built a very simple pivot table here. The year and the month is coming from the calendar table date, just like the way that we saw it come. Also coming from the calendar table, against that we have the total sales measure. The total sales measure is nothing but a simple multiplication of the units into price, which is price multiplied by units and every single row of the sales table and that actually gives me my sales calculation right here. Now, the very first thing, if you recall from Excel, we need to find the allocation percentage, meaning what is the percentage of 45, the day of sales of 2nd Jan, divided by the month total right here, which is going to give me a sum percentage, and that percentage, I'm going to run it down all the cells. Now, we can't really happen to write a formula here and use a divide sign and drag the formula down. It doesn't really work like that in Excel. So what we need is we need to be able to get this number, which is approximately 1200 across all the cells right here. And once I'm able to get the 1200 number across all the cells, then I can just simply do a divide this by this, and that is going to give me the answer. The solution for that is going to be something like, hey, this particular number, which is 1200, is coming from two filter contexts, the year and the month. It's the total of the year and the month. And I do not want to slice by the date right here. So if I just happen to remove the date filter and write my measure once again, that is going to be done. So if I just maybe take a look at my monthly total, a measure that I have already created, I'm saying that I still want to be able to calculate total sales, which is this number. But all that I would want is please don't apply the date filter. So remove filters from the calendar and the date column. This filter should not be there. If this filter is not there, it will actually pick up this particular number right here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and drag this total in my visual and that actually gives me the month total across all the cells. Once I have received the month total, the calculation becomes ridiculously easy. All that I would want to do is take 45 and divide it by 1200 and that is going to give me the answer. So if you take a look at the ratio calculation that I have built right here, which is nothing but total sales, this particular value and divided by the 1200 value is going to give me some percentage. All that I would want to do is mark this into a percentage format and we are kind of good to go. Let's just drag this particular formula in our visual and that is nothing but my percentage, which I also took a look at in Excel. At this moment, I want you to recall the Excel that we created and in that Excel, we had a column for how much money are we spending in that particular month. And if you remember that we do have an ads table, which is right here, ads table, in that we can just sum up all the values for the month of January, which is 284 plus 270 is 554. So let's just go ahead and write a very simple sum function, which is nothing but my total ads. Total ads is going to be the ads table and ads spends column. If I happen to drag that in the visual, I am going to get the total ads. But the problem is, since there was a single date in the ads table, and that was only 31st of January, I get to see the very number 554 against 31st of January. Now, the problem is, if the number just appears here, how am I going to multiply this particular number with all of these percentages? So I need to modify the context of the calculation and I need to present this particular number across all of the values right here. Simple enough, all that I will say is that, hey, why don't you just not consider the date filter, only consider the month filter and the year filter and the number is going to flow through all of the cells. How do we write such a thing? I can just go ahead and modify my calculation, total ads, and I can say something like, hey, calculate, I wanna do the same calculation. However, I would like to remove the filters from the calendar and the date column, press enter and drag the formula. Not drag the formula, but just press enter. Now, you can see that I have all of 554 right here. Now, it's incredibly easy for me to take that ratio percentage and multiply that with the ads value. And finally, I spin out the last calculation, which is nothing but the multiplication of the ratio to the total ads that we have created. And I drag this particular thing in my formula. And that is nothing but the numbers that I'm trying to take a look at. At this point, if you recall, we also had a media column in the ads table, which was giving us that what media are we spending the money on? So if you just go ahead and take a look at the particular media column, this actually shows us that are we spending money on Google? 
Google ads, on Facebook ads, on YouTube ads, and whatever that is. Now let's just try to bring that as a filter and let's just see how this works. So if I just go ahead and get the ads right here, and I'm just gonna maybe drag the media column in right here and convert that, let's say to a slicer, I'm gonna get the ability to slice by that. Once we have the slicer ready, if you happen to click on, let's say Google or YouTube or Facebook, the problem is that the only thing that is going to change is nothing but the total ads right here because we do not know that how many sales were done through YouTube or how many sales were done through Google ads or on Facebook ads. So at the moment it is going to filter the ad value but it's not going to filter my total sales. So you would want to consider that in case you have a percentage then this filter actually makes sense but if you do not have a percentage as to how much sales are coming from the three channels this filter does not make any sense. So I'm just going to get rid of the filter and let's just move on with our calculation. I'd like to give a big shout out about my tax, my Power Query and the M language courses. These are the very kind of concepts that I talk about in the course, following a very structured approach to explain you the logic of the problem so that you understand that how the solution is being built and then you can carry out this solution to implement it in your own data. Hundreds and hundreds of students have joined my courses and they have benefited a lot. In case you're interested, I'll be looking forward to seeing you in the course. And finally, we come to part three of the video as to how do you even start to present the data so that it makes sense for the user to take a look at it. Now at the moment I have removed all the, all the fluff and all the supporting calculations and I'm just presenting two things. How much did you spend on a daily basis? Sorry, how much sale did you make on a daily basis? And how much did you spend on a daily basis? That's all that I'm trying to present right here. Now at the moment, the total sure enough does match up, which is 554 money spent across all the channels in that particular month. But then the user doesn't get confidence as to this particular number is the right number. How do we actually expand on this particular number and show that this number is the right number? What we can do is we can carry out some concatenation calculations to show that how this number has been calculated, which is going to give the user a lot of confidence. All right, so here is a very simple breakup calculation that is actually concatenating the numbers that have led to this particular number. So the first one is nothing but the ratio. We have seen the ratio calculation. We've already built it. All that I'm doing is using the format function to convert that into a percentage. That is one. The next one is total ads. What was the total ads in that entire month? And that is nothing but my total ads calculation formatting that into dollars. Now, all I'm saying is that if the ratio, uh, which is this calculation is not blank, then please do a visual multiplication. So write the ratio, which is this one, uh, use the multiplication or the X sign and then use the total ads number. So if I happen to drag this calculation on onto the visual, it actually shows you that 3.8 multiplied by $554 for the entire month is going to give you this particular number. Now this doesn't quite make sense when you're taking a look at the data in a matrix visual right here. So what you can do is you can convert this into a line chart and it's going to look something like this once the line chart has been formatted. So I have total sales right here and I have total ads uh, distributed right here, which is nothing but my red line. Now, if I happen to hover my line on top of this, not only do I get to see the sales of that particular day, I also get to see ads which have been distributed on that day. And what is the calculation? So 12.3% of the sales of the entire month on that day multiplied by $537, which is for the month of May, is going to give you $66. And that is a very, very good way to actually show up that how the allocation was done and what is actually leading up to the ad breakup number right here. The only thing to note is that this particular calculation, which is nothing but my ads, uh, breakup, which is uh, the concatenation, is just kept it in the tooltip. And once you hover the mouse on top of that, you get to see the tooltip. All right, that's been it. That's how you kind of handle data sets with different granularities and even carry out allocation calculations in Power BI.